Hello everyone, in today's video, we are going to discuss about anti-differentiation or integration. The objectives of this lesson is to define anti-differentiation, to investigate antiderivatives, indefinite, integrals, and all of their parts. And to use basic integration rules to find antiderivatives. So let us have a review on differentiation. Its derivative is 2x. An idea? Yes, correct. f of x is equal to x squared. Its derivative is 3x squared. Correct. It is f of x is equal to x to the third. How about its derivative is 4x? Yes, so f of x is equal to 2x squared. Anti-differentiation. Up to this point in calculus, you have been concerned primarily with this problem. Given a function, find its derivative. Many important applications of calculus involve the inverse problem. Given the derivative of a function, find the function. This operation of determining the original function from its derivative is the inverse operation of differentiation and is called anti-differentiation. Anti-differentiation is a process or operation that reverses differentiation. In short, it is the opposite of differentiation or finding the derivative. So what is the antiderivative of f of x equals x to the seventh power? In here, first we are going to have x to the seven plus one. Then whatever the sum, it is our denominator. So we have one over eight x to the eight. So note that g prime of x is equal to f of x. g is an antiderivative of f. Later on, I will explain to you the power rule for antidifferentiation. The antidifferentiation process is also called integration. So if we have the antiderivative of f of x dx, this is the integral sign, this is the integral, and this is the differential or variable of integration, the dx. The whole of this one, we call it indefinite integral, is equal to the f of x or the antiderivative. So the derivative of f is f. So f prime of x, it is equal to your f of x. So again, to read the indefinite integral, we have the antiderivative of f of x dx, or the other one, the integral of f of x dx. So to determine or to evaluate the antiderivative of x to the n dx, we are going to have x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 where n is not equal to negative 1. If n is equal to negative 1, so x to the n is equal to x to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over x. So therefore, ask yourself, what function has the derivative of 1 over x? So we have ln x. So we have, if n is equal to negative 1, we have ln the absolute value of x. This absolute value prevents you from having to find the natural log of a negative number. In short, this rule is the power rule for integration. So the antiderivative of 2x dx using the power rule for integration, it is equal to x squared. So let us take a look at the graph for this one. So y is equal to x squared. 
So what if we were to ship the grub up one unit? So do the slopes of the two uh, parabola change? So the slopes stay the same. So the antiderivative of 2x dx is equal to x squared plus 1 according to the graph. So the antiderivative of 2x dx is equal to x squared plus c. If a function has an antiderivative, then it has an infinite number of antiderivatives. So in here, we have the constant of integration. So whenever we integrate indefinite integrals, we, also, we always have to write plus c. So to capture the fact that there are infinitely many antiderivatives, we add a constant. So let us have the basic integration rules. In here, the antiderivative of a number dx is equal to the number x plus c. So whatever the constant or the number. So to evaluate the uh, antiderivative of 2 dx, it is equal to 2x plus c. Now let us have the constant rule for integration. So in here, the antiderivative of c dx is equal to cx plus c. So always remember when you write C, it is a capital letter. So let us evaluate the antiderivative of negative 5 dx. So in here, we have negative 5x plus C. So if we are going to evaluate the antiderivative of a number times the function f of x dx in here, we are going to write the number outside the integral symbol. And then we are going to integrate first the function before we are going to multiply. So the integral of a function times a constant is equal to the constant times the integral of the function. So warning, you cannot pull out variables, just the constants. So let us evaluate the antiderivative of 5x to the third dx. In here, we are going to write 5 outside the integral symbol. And then we are going to integrate x to the third. So in integrating x to the third, it is x to the 3 plus 1, you add, over 3 plus 1. So x to the fourth over 4 plus the capital letter C. So simplifying further, we have 5 over 4, x to the 4 plus C. So how do you know if you have found the correct antiderivative? Simply take the derivative of your answer to check. So for the constant multiple rule for integration, if we are going to evaluate the antiderivative of a constant c times f of x dx, it is equal to c times the antiderivative of f of x dx. We also have some indifference rules for integration. So to evaluate the antiderivative of f of x plus gx dx, it is equal to the antiderivative of f of x dx plus the antiderivative of g of x dx. And if we have the antiderivative of f of x minus g of x dx, it is equal to the antiderivative of f of x dx minus the antiderivative of g of x dx. Now let us evaluate the antiderivative of 6x squared minus 4x minus 1 over x plus 1 dx. So in here, it is a combination of the sum and difference. So to get the antiderivative, we have 
the antiderivative of 6x squared dx minus the antiderivative of 4x dx minus the antiderivative of 1 over x dx plus the antiderivative of 1 dx. Then we are going to have 6 times x to the third over 3 minus 4 x squared over 2 minus ln absolute value of x plus x plus c is equal to, simplifying further, we get 2x to the third minus 2x squared minus ln absolute x plus x plus c. Okay, so let us have other examples. Let us evaluate the antiderivative of 3t squared dt. So in here, we are going to write 3 outside the integral symbol, and then we are going to, de to get the antiderivative of t squared. The antiderivative of t squared is equal to t to the third over 3. Then we are going to cancel 3, so the final answer is t to the third plus c. Now let us have to evaluate the antiderivative of 5 du. So it is applying the constant rule for integration. So the answer is 5u plus c. Now let us evaluate the antiderivative of 2x to the negative, negative 2 dx. So in here we are going to write 2 outside the integral symbol and then we are going to get the antiderivative of x to the negative 2, which is equal to x to the negative 1 over negative 1. And then we are going to make our exponent positive. So simplifying further, the final answer is negative 2 over x plus c. Then we have to evaluate the antiderivative of x times 3x plus 4 dx. The first thing you need to do is to multiply or distribute x inside the parentheses. So we will be getting the antiderivative of 3x squared plus 4x dx. Then we are going to get the antiderivative of h. So it is equal to x to the third plus 2x to the second plus c. So here are some indefinite integrals that we need to follow. So as you can see here, we have the power rule for integration as well as the antiderivative of your trigonometric functions. So all you need to do is to remember them. So for the conclusion, Anti-differentiation is a process or operation that reverses differentiation. The anti-differentiation process is also called integration. Similar to differentiation, integration has a variety of rules that we must remember, recall, and be able to use. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Bye!